Okay. So so in the simple emote of the Nosu Yogi Vanocho. Betsoi Tishabov, Bez Hashem, this year. Mehera, Mehera will have the Gula Shlema. And uh, this is the way the Jews go in from being with Abel. All the Jews in the world right now are learning Daf Yomi. We're not the only night here. Because Torah never stops. So this is the way a, a Jew that really is mourning for the Beis HaMikdash, he eats something, even if he's tired and all day, he goes to the Gemara. That's the nicest, nicest thing ever. So the Heilige Mishnah, Daf Kuf Mem Hei Amud Bet, 145b. The Mishnah is about 10 lines in. Kol Sheba Bechamin Me'erev Shabbat. Any food that was prepared before Shabbat with hot water, Shorin Oto Bechamin Bishabbat. You can soak it in hot water on Shabbat. So that it gets soft, and and it, it, it's not the isur of mivashel. Why not? Why why isn't the isur of bishul? Because there's no bishul after bishul. Since since it was already cooked erev Shabbat, you could soak it now in the hot water. Once something is cooked, you can't recook it. That quality that the cooking gave can't be redone. Um. Now, there's an Issa that to put it back onto the fire itself, as we learned all the way back in Perkira. That's an Issa of putting it back onto the fire. This is talking about putting it into like clear Rishon. But if you have something that was not placed into hot water on Erev Shabbat, Medichin Oto Bechamim Bishabbat. You're allowed to rinse it in hot water on Shabbat, but you can't soak it in hot water. Why? Because since you can really, this is something that did not come into hot water on Shabbat, meaning it's a type of food. It's not just something that happened. Not to, it's a type of food like uh, um, dried meat that you can eat it. Real, you could eat it technically when it's raw. Therefore, we don't view. Um, the hot water that we're going to pour on it on Shabbat as it's gemar melocha, as it's cooking. Because that's loy zehu bishulo. As she says, veloy amin zehu bishuleho. This is not its cooking. Um, soon we'll see cases that just by pouring chutz ben hayoshon, like this, besides salted fish, that was already salted for a, a year. The dog in Meluchim Ketanim. Some some gears have this, some gears don't have them. Um, small salted fish. The Kulias Haispanin. Or a tuna from Spain. Those, you're not allowed to even rinse in hot water. Okay. And the reason is she had the chosen zuhi gemar melachta, because their rinsing is their gemar melacha. Um, that's the iser of mivashel. So since you're pouring boiling hot water, yad so let it, right? That the hand gets scalded. Therefore, you're being over on the gemar melacha of bishu, and you're over on bishu. Okay. By the way, the the bira melacha brings down. Achroidim that say that you know which melacha it is, you're not going to believe it. The levush and the prima gadim. Since they're going to be finished now, they're so they're so sensitive that they'll be finished um, by by rinsing them with hot water. So it's makib patish. <laughs> makib patish, like the last blow of the hammer on a keli, like we had many times. That the last blow finishes it. So. Since since it wasn't fit for eating, and now you made it fit, 
So, he, so according to them, what's, what's the big nafkamin according to these shittas? That you're not allowed to rinse it even in cold water. Wow. Because the, whatever, because it's not, not specifically hot. The point is, they're too salty, whatever it is, and this is like the, is what you have to do, the last thing. So, to be Allah the Chavitz Chaim, he has a long Bira Allah on this, and he knocks away the Yishitis. He says, no such thing. As, uh, he brings proofs. I mean, he actually had the utmost respect to them, but he held from different rayas that there's no such a thing in Oichlin, in food, as Makabe Patish. However, the Levush and the Prima Godim say there is. So, okay, he's the Basroi. He comes after, and he's putting everything together and showing it will be a very interesting Bira Allah to go through. But they do bring down, then Yerushalmi, it's mefurish that there is such a thing. So maybe he's still right, because maybe the Babi doesn't hold like that, whatever, he'd bring rice from the Babi. But there is such a thing for sure, like the Lushan Prima Godin. And the true Saraj brings it down. And it seems that there's a lot. Okay. Others say. Okay, fine. Let's continue now. Says the Gemara, Kegoyin Mai. So, the first din of the Mishnah was what? Kol Shabbat B'chamin Me'erev Shabbat. It was something that was cooked on Erev Shabbat. As we're going to see in a minute what it is exactly. And then, they soaked it in like a clearly shown on Erev Shabbat. So that... You're allowed to, uh, no, so there was cooked Erev Shabbat. So that you're allowed to put into, a, soak it into a, a cup of Kli Rishon on Shabbat because ain't Bishel Acha Bishel. So the owner wants to know what exactly, what's that thing that you did? That it's a very interesting type of thing. You have a very interesting thing that you cook it on Erev Shabbat and then on Shabbat you want to put it into hot water to re soak it. I'm going to start to go and turn the gul to the Rabbi Abba. Like the Tarnagolet, like the chicken of Rabbi Abba. What would he do? He would cook it, and then for many days he would soak it in hot water until it would totally fall apart by itself. Um, it seems like it was a, a medicinal thing, and um, you could, it's, 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 it's still able to be eaten by. People, so therefore it doesn't. It's not also on Shabbos. We'll see soon. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It basically, it's like chicken broth or whatever it is. It just falls apart. Once I visited Eretz Yisrael, the Oichlan Mine, and they fed me from this. And if not for Rabbi Abba or Rabbi Avohu. They want to say the Ashke and Chamer Batlos Atafi that made me drink old wine that was three years old. Okay, which means it brought out its leaves three times. That's three years. If he wouldn't have given me that wine to to, to settle my 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 soul, it nasty. I would have been, I would have been so sensitive that I would have vomited. It was so bad," said Rav Safra. This this. This chicken that was soaked for several days. This is this, by the way. This is a tish of tish of daf. Doesn't want to talk about anything that you can eat. Um, now the Gemara tells us about he was married to Sarah Biyachon. Uh, and he would, he would have to spit when he reminded himself of the kutach of the bavlim. In Bavel, in Iraq, they had this kutach. We know kutach is all over Shas. We had it in Brochus, we had it in Shab, we had it everywhere. The kutach is this like sour milk. By the way, they, they always talk about it. Like, it's the dip for your bread. And I'm always like, I'm glad I'm not there. I'm not glad I'm not there. Finally, we get to the Gemara that Bjorchen used to spit when he used to just remind himself of it. Because it was so bad, but for some reason that's what everybody ate. It was sour milk, 
with spoiled old uh, crumbs, bread crumbs and salt. And the rich bavlim, and it's very finicky, it's very, very like very choshev. You have that a lot in the world, that the rich people are nebuch there. You go to these places in the world, they have the most horrible dishes. I, I wouldn't even say them. I saw them in these like little kid uh, magazines, these Jewish kid magazines. They show the kids just some interesting thing. Something mamish you could just, to know. It's a big delicacy. It costs like, you know, $200 for a plate of it. The more expensive, the more. So you see that the rich people, the poor people, they go straight for the, for the bread and that's it. The kamut, right? You have to be rich now. I mean, good the pavloi. Um, so anyways, the, that's what he did. If Yosef was from Bavel, and he wasn't happy, Amr Rabbi Yosef, later Kanan, we could also spit mitan gul to the Rabbi Abba from Rabbi Abba's chicken soup. Okay? The oid, he didn't like that Rabbi Yochanan and people in Eretz Yisrael People in Eretz Yisrael would generally not dislike the people in Babel. It was a certain, like, uh, I'm not saying that, but there was a certain dislike, and Rabbi Yechon didn't like their food. So Rabbi Yosef said, so we could also spit about their food. Now, obviously, these Gemaras are not, um, this is like what we children would do over here. This is, this is, there's a lot of this here. We don't know what they are exactly. The Oid, but this is the Pashup Shat. Um... And second of all, the Omer of Gazo, Rav Gazo said, "Zim nechod eklois lahas." And once I went there to sell, but of this kuchet bevloi, she ilu mi nekol brichem erav. All the sick people in Eretz Yisrael asked me to make them. Okay, so they they obviously, so Rav Gazo has a nice story that obviously in Eretz Yisrael they weren't so not fond, they weren't so repulsed by kutach. They actually liked it very much, and they all wanted it for all the sick people. Um, okay, now what exactly is going on over here? I don't know. Maybe you have to look at some mashah here. Chedusha, what's this? Kind of, what, why is the Gemara? Why did these, these great Amaroyim say such things? And what, why does everyone have to record them? Okay, Vaita Dr. Mishnah, Kol Shalim Actually, it's it's, it's Arab Tishvav's plot. Yeah, so <laughs> here goes my. I have to think of something else. Fine. Anyways, anything that did not come into hot water on Erev Shabbat, so that you can rinse, but um, besides Maliyah Hayashan, old salted fish, and the tuna, then you can't even rinse in hot water because that's the Easter of Bishal, it's the Gemara Malacha. Says the Gemara, what happens? Hey, Diach, if he took this tuna, Spanish tuna, or he took this old salted fish, my, what's the Halacha? Does the Mishnah mean that he's mamish gemar melacha means an iser deraisa or an iser derabanan? Omer Rav Yosef Chayiv Chatos. Omer Ma Brei Rav Yosef Afanan Im Tanu Chutz Mizdech Joshua Mekusa Yisponu Shad Chosin Zuik Gemar Melachton Melachton, and you see that the Mishnah calls it gemar melachton. It doesn't say iser; it's a gemar melacha. So you see from our Mishnah, the lashon our Mishnah is mashma shmamino. Now, what was this Hava mean exactly? Why did the Gemara ask such a shaila if they saw it in the Mishnah? It's good child. I don't know. Yosef Rebchia is something to think about. I mean, it's Beferish in the Mishnah. Yosef Rebchia Barabba Verabasi Kamed Rabbi Yechon of Yosef Rebchia Yechon Vekamed Namni. Omad Rebchia Barabba Verabasi. Rebchia Barabba and Rebasi were sitting before Rabbi Yechon and Rabbi Yechon was sitting and dozing. So Rebchia Barabba told Rebasi if they might if they should be bubble shmein. Why are the the fowl in in uh, in Bovel, fatter than the ones in Eretz Yisrael. Omar Lei, so Rabbi told him, "Klach lemidbar Aza, ve'arachos shmedim him." Not true. Let's go to the Aza midbar in Eretz Yisrael. Oh. No, 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 no. Indeed, it is. I'll get you. Matifke, Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, Titen Kailah. 
So let's go to Midbarad, thank you. They are Acho Shmeinimhem, and we'll find um, Oifis that are fatter than ones in Bavel. Then he asked them, Mamma Yadam Shab Bavel Smechim. Why are the people in Bavel happier on Yom Tif than people in Israel? So he said, because they're poor. And they never have a good meal. And they never stop working because they're poor. Therefore, all of their happiness is, gar- is, is waiting, is being hoarded for Yom Tif. Yom Tif comes, that's when they're able to release all their tension and be happy. Why are the Timid Chachomim in Bavel outstanding in their dress? They have very nice dresses. They dress in very nice suits and things like that. There's a Gemara in Kedushan that says that the Timid Chachomim in Bavel were Doimel Malachi Hashoris. They had beautiful white and beautiful clothing. So he told him, and the Tamil Chavim in Eretz they don't they don't beautify themselves so much. So he told them Lefisha Einon Bnei Toiro, because the Bavel Tamil Chavim are not real Bnei Toiro like their friends in Eretz Yisrael, and therefore people don't give them the respect of Toiro. Therefore they have to dress in a better way in order so that um, people should think they're Choshev. Fine, if they ma'ov if they Chavim Muzamim. Why are goyim so mezuha? Mezuha means filled with tumor. Their souls are so tomedic. He says because they eat shkotzim and remosim. They eat all sorts of non-kosher things. And that's where it comes from. Okay? And the yidin eat kosher food. So therefore, they're not, the Pesach says, when it tamez Okay, Itar Behu, suddenly in the middle of this conversation, Rabbi Yechonon wakes, wakes up. Itar Behu, Rabbi Yechonon, and he says to them, Dardaki, children. Um, meaning, and he's calling them that because he's telling them that they didn't, they're not saying good. It says, Tell Chochma, you are my sister. If you know a halacha, as well as you know that your sister is prohibited to you, then say so. Tell that halacha to others. If not, don't say it. So, um, so they said to him, okay, so tell us where we went wrong on our answers. You're saying we don't know. So Rabbi said, the real answer is that the Bavel birds are fatter. He was giving him like, oh, there's one place that has them. But they really are. And the reason is because they never were exiled from their habitat. Like it says, Therefore the Pesach says, Therefore, the wine in Moyov is good and the, the smell is good. I think this is the Pasuk that uh, Chacham told Achashverish. Remember when he said he wanted them to judge Vashti? And they knew that Mimonashach, if they stay killer, then when he sobers up, he'll get upset. And if they stay don't kill her, he'll be upset. He, what about my covet? So they quoted this Pasuk. And they said, Shanan I think it's a good morning. And they said, We, we're, we've been exiled. So since we're not sitting on our sediment, our reicha, we don't, we, don't really, we don't have good das. We don't have to judge things well. We're off balance. We're knocked them off balance. So therefore, so therefore, um, therefore the, the birds of Eretz Yisrael, they're not, they went to exile. Now, basically wine that doesn't move is good. Mayav was strong. So,
Marshall says, what about that place that he showed that they're strong, they have very fat birds? So he says, even though Yeshua conquered Aza, but the Plishtim took it over. And the first base of Migdash, the Jews didn't live there. So therefore, when it was destroyed, the birds never were exiled. It seems like the birds were exiled wherever the Jews were, went to exile. So this is actually very, very interesting that it's Erev Tishabah's blot here. We're learning it on Tisha here, talking about the Golas. So, these birds of Eretz Yisrael, now I don't understand, if they were exiled, the birds, so what are they doing back in Eretz Yisrael? They came back. And, so the Gemara says, V'hocha v'nolon, the Golu. It says, the Gemara, how do we know that they actually were exiled? M- maybe only the Jews went. Can you believe this is Arab Tishbuf? It's flat. 52 years of the first Golos of Bayes Rishon. Nobody ever, they over Ish Behuda. Nobody walked through the, Jew, Judea, the Judah, the, 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 the region. Shanemar Al Horem Esav Chivonehi. Posuk in today's Haftarah. Can you just tell me, believe Ish Oiver? Okay? It's unbelievable. Come on. I told you, it always comes. This is Arab Tishvav. It's preparing us for Tishvav. And the word Behema begimati yo chamshin vitartin have. So now, since Behema is 52, um, those 52 years that nobody walked in Yehuda, the animals also. Even the Oif HaShomayim and the Behemoth went out to Golos. So now they came back with the Jews also. But since they were off balance, they never became like they were before. Um, pretty incredible, no? Omer Rabbi Yaakov HaMivichon, Kulon Chazu. All the animals came back. Those uh, slopes in Babel, like waterfalls, that fall into the Nahar Paras, into the Euphrates River, they bring the water back to the spring called Ein Etom, in Eretz which is higher than him. How? Because under the Euphrates River, there are streams, and they reach Eretz Yisrael. So the fish that went to Babel came back to Eretz Yisrael. The high kibn de Lishar Shidre, but these two fish, the, the sorry, the, the Spanish tuna, it doesn't have a hard enough spine to swim. The Motsi Solik. He wasn't able to go back. And that's why, now does this have anything to do with our could be that's why they, they get cooked so easily. The softer. That means the fish also. Everything was exiled. Everything. Everything went into exile. What about the next question? Why are they so happy in Yom Tif? That's this past week's after, impending the doom. That what? The doom that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to make all of its joy, its Yom Tovim, everything, cease. Because Klai Yisrael didn't like them. It says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't like them. So therefore, after the Churban, the Simcha in the Moed was lessened. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't say that curse for Babel. He's talking about Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael's joy will, be, will cease. May ho yu olay l'toyrach. Omer Rabbi Lozer, Omer HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Le'dang l'Yisrael shechoytin l'fonai, El shematrich n'esi le'y de ezuk zeir kosho avi aleyim. What does it mean that 
the, the, the Yom Tiv was a burden on Klai Yisrael. So Klai HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, oh no, it sounds like HaKadosh Baruch Hu saying that. Because, what's HaKadosh Baruch Hu saying? That the Yidin, their joy was Shalai L'Shem Shemaim. What was the joy of Yom Tiv? The joy was they could have a good meal. It was Shalai L'Shem Shemaim. Therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, My nefesh, Hashem's talking about himself, all I have is the, the bother to figure out which punishment is midah connected midah. Because at the end of the day, you are keeping the umtif and you are enjoying. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make yomtif itself not so happy. And we'll see soon exactly how Kadosh Baruch Hu did that. There was never a Yom Tif that the soldiers didn't come to Tzipari to plunder and to, to, to take things from the Yid. Every Yom Tif they come to Tveria to, to place a major tax like Egmoin, the Komtoin, Ubal's Moira. Egmoin was the Hegmoin, the governor. Komtoin was the ruler. Ubal's Moira was the police. So, basically, they come every Yom Tif and they make different Xeris. Why are the Tamid Chachamim in Bovel so outstanding in their dress? Because they were exiled from Eretz Yisrael. And the normal way for a person that's been exiled, in order to be respected by, he feels like an outsider, so in order to be respected by the place that he's exiled to, he wears especially, especially nice clothing. The Amri Yinchik, as people say, Bimoso Shmai Beloi Moso Toisvai. In my city, it's enough with my name. But if I'm not in my city, I need my clothing. Isn't that a great line? Everybody knows who you are. Your clothing, you're not your clothing. If you're a good guy, you're good. When you leave the city, no one ever heard of you. So why should anybody look at you? So yeah, we have to be something nicer. Let's give Valdik. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Still a little bit needs a beer over here, no? Once they were in Bavel for so long, it became their place where they have to wear such nice clothing. Maybe they got used to it. I don't know what chat it. Ha 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 boyim ya shresh ya koiv yoti tufolach yisroel. Now the Gemara brings a brisa that supports Rav Yoichel. Tony Rav Yosef on that pasuk. These are the Tamid Chacham in Bavel that make beautiful uh, buddings and flowers for the Torah. Yotzit Ufarach, Yisrael. He's talking about the Jews, Haboyim Yashish Yaakov. They come to Bavel. They're going to root themselves there and make beautiful Tzitzim and Prochim for the Torah. So you see that the Pesach is actually Prophesizing that, the, that the, those that will go to Bavel were, uh, will be great in Torah. Not like Ravasi said before, that they're not in Torah. So therefore, the reason must be, like Rabbi Yechonon corrected them, they are in Torah, but they're not in the right places. The real reason why Goyim have such tumor. Is because they didn't stand and I see nice Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Nochosh Achavay Tel Bazu Hamo. Because when the Nochosh had relations with Chavom, he placed inside of her this tumor. And now, all those descendants of Chavom, which is all humanity, all they all have this tumor ruchness. Chazal say that he was Bo'aleho. 
when he gave her this Eitzah. And the Masha explains that before the, 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 the Chet, the, since he was a Telemel Kim, he was perfect. There was no, there was no Revev, there was no, no stain, nothing was able to, only after they did the Chet, so now, she had Zuama. So Yisrael, she omdu ala Sinai, paska Zuama Oson. Or the Chacham, she loy omdu ala Sinai, loy paska Zuama Oson. But since we went to Arsinai, so it, ca- it came off. Like the Pasuk says in Shir Hashim, Kulach yafar ayati umum ein bach. No mum in you anymore. And that's one of the mumim that we had. Um, Omalei Ravach, Amirei Ravashi, Gerim Mai. What about Gerim? They weren't on Arsinai. So how do they have that they don't have Zuamu? The Gemara says, Even though they weren't there, but their mazel was there. That's the malach. The mazel is the malach of a person who protects him in based in Shulmaila. So that was enough to remove the zuama of the nachash. Even those who are not here today, Imanu Hayyam. Which means that the ones that are not here today, but will be here one day, they are with us here today. They're part of the Brit, Moshe said, of Kabbalah Torah. For three generations, it, 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 was, it didn't cease. Avram Hildes, Shmov, Yitzhak Hildes, Esav. So the first two Doiroys, in the, of, in the Avot, in Avram Yitzchok, there was still Zuamo. And they had to be in the Var, like the Swan right? They had to sort it out. So they gave it out to one of the children, and that's why they had Rishon. But Yaakov, Hoyelishnim, Asa Shvatim, Shuli Hoyeb, and Shum Doifi, there was nothing wrong with them. They were perfect tzaddikim. So according to Rabbi Abba, they were already fixed from the Zuamo way before. Hasinai. I once heard, I forgot, Aftali Trump, maybe, I forgot who that, they were, the, the, the Shams of the Geir, maybe, maybe it comes from this Gemara, that in every country when Akash Baruch went around, and they said, we don't want it, because it says, al Khab Chatukhi, this and that. So there was always a few people there that said, we, we will take it. And they were the Geir that come now. And that's why, it was like that their mazel could be there already. Could be they already did something then. Whatever that means, weiter. So, the Hilgi Mishnah. Shoivir Adam is a chavis lechali mena gregris. Oh, this is a famous Mishnah. A person is allowed to break a barrel with a knife or a sword in order to slice. Slice it so that he can eat dried figs from the barrel. As long as he doesn't have kavono to make a um, nice round hole that could be used as an opening, because then that's tikkun keli. That's the, like the gemar melachter of the keli. So you chayav a makiv patish. That's according to Rashi. Others say it's boyne. Um, now, real Pesach has to be Midaraisa to be able to bring, put things in and put, take things out. Okay? Just, just give me one second, please. Okay, so when, when is it mutter? It's mutter if you make an ugly opening. You just like, make like, you know, make an opening. It's not neat, it's not good. So basically, what, why, so why is it not a problem? Because it's kilkul. It's destructive. If you make a nice Pesach, it's makkah the patish, you actually made the keli 
perfect now because the keli doesn't not finish unless it has a way to get things in and out. So now you made it perfect. But if you just make a very bad hole, which is not a good pesach, so it's kilkul. The problem is that the Mishnah all the way back in the Kufhe said, call him a kalkal in Peturin. You're not chayef chatos, but it's also in So over here it says, shoiver, it doesn't say that it's no, it's that you're patur. In our Mishnah over here it says, shover adam, a man may, which means it's mutar, 100%. There's no even isu de Rabbanan. Um, some want to say, somebody showing him say, that if you want to get food, so it's Tzorech Shabbat, then there's no Itzu de Rabbanan. That's how many of you should say. Rashi doesn't, from Rashi, it doesn't look so. Um, Rashi says, the Eim B'Mekalkel Shum Itzu B'Shabbos. Eim B'Mekalkel, there's no, there's no, Mekalkel, no Yisur. Rashi says, it's not because you did Tzorech of Shabbat. It's Tzorech of Shabbat, because it's just because of the Kilkul itself. So therefore the question on Rashi is, we said before that Kilkul is an Isr, um, so what they want to say for Rashi is that the only time Kilkul is in Isra Rabbanu and Dafkafe is when you do a Melacha. You're doing a Melacha, one of the third Melachot. But, yeah, you did it, but you did it, but you did, but, but you, but you did, but you did it in a destructive fashion. So then, okay, since you did the Melacha, so then the Chachamim said, don't even do it in a destructive fashion, which is not really the Melacha. Because if you do it like that, then you'll end up doing the malacha in a constructive fashion. But let's say you don't do a malacha at all. So that is that's just, just straight kilkul, not kilkul malacha, kilkul stam. So that's not a, that's nothing. And that's what Rashi is saying over here. Because Rashi, oh, the halacha, we had a, we had a machlekes before, ain't binyin or stira in kalim. So therefore, what's the whole malacha that you could be over over here? Stira, are you destroying? So you let to do it lechatchila, because destroying is the zom melacha in kelim. You have to do it in a in a in a building, melacha, binyan stira. In a kelim, there's no binyan stira. So therefore, all you have left is just kilkul stam, kilkul stam. That's a hundred percent mutar. Um, Other is showing him that don't go for this because they hold that there is binyan and steering kalim. Hold that the Mishnah is talking about a barrel called a mustaki. Um, and mustaki is a very, very junky barrel. So stira, you're not going to be over because steer is only by a really good, strong, lasting thing and you break it and you destroy it. So therefore, you're not going to be over on steer. Um Okay. Let's continue. I just the ein noik from megufa shachavis. Tivir Rabbi Yehuda. You're not going to make a neck of a hole in the covering of a the, the barrel covering that was attached with like a mortar or something. Because if you make a hole in it, you're being mistaken in the pesach. So what do you do? You have to remove. The whole thing off. So when they wanted to drink wine from the Chavis, sometimes they would make a small hole. They would tilt the barrel and take some wine out of that. So if you the hole, that's also because you've been stuck in the keli. So what do you do? What you do is, you can't make a hole because that's a ticking keli. So what you do is, you take off the whole covering, the whole top. Now why isn't that making a new brand new petach, a new opening? Because we already learned before that it's not a new opening because it's not ever it's not considered attached. Because since when they put it on initially, it was made to be taken off. Therefore, it's not considered like you made a brand new petach. That petach is already there, and therefore you take the whole thing off. That's the eight. Okay, the chacham matir and the chacham say it's fine to make that hole uh, to, to to make that hole on top. Because that's not normally done. And therefore that's not really called the Gemara Keli. 
v'shelo yikvena mitzida. But everybody agrees you can't make a hole in the side. That is definitely normal. That's tikkun keli. V'maytan nekuva. But if you already had a hole, and if Shabbat and you want to stuff the hole, lo yitena leal shavu. Don't place wax in it. Veshu mimoreyach, because it smooths out the wax, and that is the melacha of mimachik. Okay, smoothing something out. Omar Rabbi Yehuda, my sevol ifnei Rabbi Yechonon ben Zakai ba'arov. The story came before Arov, which is a place in the Golil. And you remember this? We had this before that he lived there for 18 years. And they only had two questions that they asked him. One was on Daf Kuf Chof Aleph, and one was over here. This is the other question. And he gave a curse to the place. He said, you'll never have Torah there. All of you will be like olive growers. I once told it to you, right? He was Shalmi. So this is one of the questions that they asked him in 18 years. And they asked him, could we put the wax on it? But Omar, and he said, I'm worried that he has to, he's over on a chatos, meaning I'm not sure. But... I'm not sure if this is going to turn into me, Meruach and, and therefore me, he might be over on a chatos. This is only a barrel, this whole Mishnah, that's filled with figs that were mushed together in this, uh, what are they called again? In this round, the eagle. So then, in order to break it apart, you need this knife or this saw that you're using. So once you're using the knife and the saw for the eagle, eagle dvela, then you can already use it for the chavs. Avol mifayrodois, but if the te'enim are independent, they're individual and they're not stuck together, so you don't need a special knife to take them apart, loy. Then you now let them move the knife or the sword to break the barrel. Because a, a keli can only be moved for the needs of its tashvich that it, it's made for. Now, that's what Nechem Yeshita, if you remember. Okay? Because he says that Kalim have to be only moved with Tzorech Shimushon. Right? Umifurado Isloi. He says, tomorrow Umifurado Isloi. Meisve. Are you telling me that you're really not allowed? That's what... Meisve, I ask you a kasha from the following b'raiser. Rebishim Megamil Oimeh. Maybe other mitzvah chavos shall yain a matzis reish of a saif. Umenich lefnei oechem shabbos. Person is allowed to bring a barrel of wine, slice off its head with a sword, in order to place it before the guests on Shabbos. The ein chayshish and he doesn't have to worry about chilul Shabbat. So you see over here that even for wine. Now wine doesn't need the the knife, right? The knife is needed for sure not for for wine. Wine is liquid. So you moved the knife and the sword to break the chavis. So you see here that you let him move a keli even if it's not for its main purpose. So the more answers, right? Because everybody agrees that slicing off a barrel top with a sword is not a sword's main purpose. But you see over here that you can use it. And for the Gemara, he Rabbonon. That price is going the sheet of the Rabbonon. That doesn't agree with Rabbi Yechonah. But Masnisin of Nechemia, our Mishnah is Rabbi Nechemia. That's what Rabbi Yechonah said, that our Mishnah must be speaking about Te'enim that are drusot, that are all stuck together. So the Gemara says, Who told Rabbi Yechonah this? Umay duchid Rabbi Yechonah loikim masnisin kerev Nechemia, bedrusos, loikim bedrusos, loikim bedrusos, virabonon. Who told Rabbi Yechonah that our Mishnah has to go like Rabbi Nechemia, and therefore he had to say, it's only talking about drusos, which the Saif is made for. Maybe it's like the Rabbon, Omarov masnisin kshise. Because our Mishnah had a problem for Rabbi Isha. My ear, the Tony Krogus. Listen to Paris. Why does why, why it say figs? Just say, if you have a barrel full of fruit, who cares what fruit? So it must be that if it said figs, it's only figs, because the figs that are stuck together. Ah, so then the knife, the sword, is made for that. Therefore, I can take it and, and use it to make a hole in the barrel in the permis- permitted way. Otherwise, it's mukta. Tan yochodo. Chesolo yishol gloigroiz vishot morin. Baskets of figs and of dates. Now, if their covering is tied with a rope, 
Matir, a person is allowed to untie the rope. Mafkia v'choytich. And he can also break apart the knot or rip it, even if he uses a knife. Betanya idach, another brayta says. Matir, avli mafkia v'choytich. You could undo it, you could take out the rope, but you can't rip it with a knife. Because the keli can only be used for the tashrish that's miyuchit for it. And the sakin is not made primarily for that. Okay? So you see, so the Gemara is asking, these two braytot seemingly contradict each other. So the Gemara says, Lekasha. Ho Rabbonon, ho One is Rabbonon, one is Rabbonon. Nechemi has a problem. Rabbanon don't. The tanya of Nechemi, even Afilu Tarvod, even the spoon, Afilu Talas, Afilu Stak, and Eni Tolin, El Tzoyich Tashmishon. You can only move them for what they are primarily made for. So we learned in the Mishnah. Everyone agrees that on the side of the barrel, it's also to make because it's thick and keli. Okay. So exactly how do you make that keli? Bo mi name Rav Sheshes Mal the Michraz the Mich the Mivraz Chavita Bevutiya Bishabta. Are you allowed? to spear, to pierce with a spear into the walls of a barrel in order to make a hole in it. So, if you now I'll make a regular hole, the Mars question is, could you make a hole, such a type of hole? Do we have the air, is the air conditioning on? Oh yeah? Okay, fine. Fine, I guess it's on. <laughs> it's all psychological. If you tell me it's 72, it's 72. Now I forget. The fistra kamechavin, the osir idim, the ayin yofi kamechavin, shari. The shari. So the question is like this. This guy that's, point, that's spearing it with his spear, is he trying to make a new opening? So it's osir, because stick and keli, it's on the side. Idilmo, since he's not making it nicely, that's not the way a guy makes a nice hole on the side of his barrel. He makes it, you know, he does it nicely. He's just spearing it. So maybe la'ayin yofi kamechavin. So, he's just trying to show how benevolent he is. Why? Because the spear is going to make a large hole. I'm not going to make this little cute spout, pour you a little bit. Have here, watch this. Let it flow. I'm a very benevolent guy. It's Shabbos, the COVID, the Orchim. Very good. So therefore, he doesn't really want to make a Pesach in the side. Okay. No. He has intentions to make it a real Pesach, like the first side of the doubt. Oser and it's May say the Gemara has the Kasher. Person could bring a barrel of wine, of wine, and slice its head off with a sword and place it in front of the archiv on Shabbos. Um, why? Because he's not making a pesach. All he's trying to do is show the archiv that whatever you want is yours. I'll open the whole barrel for you. Take whenever you want. Go over and take refills. So therefore we should say the same thing. Either Roimach. That when a person makes a large hole with his spear and not a careful hole, we should say that he's just doing it not to make a Pesach. So the Gemara says, Why there? He's for sure trying to be very benevolent. Why? Because he's cutting part of the barrel off. If he really wanted to make a nice hole, he would have cut where it's attached, the covering, with the, with the tar, with the mortar around it. But he took off more, so he, what's he doing? It is, we're finishing this today, there's no covering, there's nothing. Let's go, everybody enjoy Shabbat Shalom. But, when you pierce it with a, with a spear, if your kavana was just to show be'ayin yofe, liftuche miftach, he should have just taken off the tap. Okay? And we said before, you're allowed to take off the tap covering. 
because it's not a chibur. So, this, the very fact that he wants to actually make a hole on the side with his spear, that's clearly he's trying to make a new opening. Therefore, it's awesome. The Mishnah said, Ain in the gufa. You're not going to make it on the top hole, according to Rabbi Yehuda. The Chacham said it's mutter. Why? So Rabbi Yehuda holds it the problem of Tikkun Keli. Because it's normal to make such a hole. The Chacham said it's not normal. And then the Mishnah says, everybody agrees on the side, it's normal, it's petach, it's Tikkun Keli. So no one wants to know exactly how is it also to make the hole on the side. Amr Avunah Machloikes, Lemalo, Avul Minatza, Adivri Hakal Osir. That's what it means. Megufa means, Enoch Megufa means on the top. But, everybody agrees, Loikvena um, Bitsida means the side. Loikvena Bitsida means, that's what it means, on the side. Okay. Actually, the Machlik is on the side. Aval Gabal, the Viakal Mutta, everyone holds it's not the Derech, it's Mutar. Doesn't it say that everybody agrees you shouldn't do it on the side? You just told me it's a machlekes. Hasam the gufa the chavist. It means on the side of the barrel, which means Rav Huna said there's a machlekes on the top of the covering, but on the side of the covering, everybody agrees it's a problem. Rav Chizda says there's machloikis on the side of the covering. There, it's a question if it's a derech or not the derech. But on the top, everyone agrees it's mutter. Okay? And, and what about on the side of the barrel? That is what the Mishnah said, like, that's the actual barrel. That's what the Mishnah is talking about. So when it said everyone agrees on the side, it's Machlekes of Huna, everyone agrees, like of Huna, on the side of the barrel cover. And according to Rav it means on the side of the barrel. But on the barrel cover, the Chachamim are arguing with him saying it's Mutter. Ton Rabbanon. Now, everybody, that means, Rav Huna and Rav Chizda are both agreeing here, that on the side of the barrel, for sure, it's Usr. You're not allowed to make a brand new hole and the keli on Shabbos, bim bother hoisif moisif. But if you want to add to a hole, to widen it, you could. The yeshem emaisifin, you can't. The shovin, but everyone agrees, shenoikvin nekev yosh on the chatchila, that they already closed up a hole. You let it now reopen it. That's not like making a petach chadash, because that's already made and waiting for it to be reopened, and therefore its covering is nothing. Why does the Tanakhama say that you're allowed to add to a hole? Why? In making a brand new hole is a problem. So why wouldn't adding to the hole is also a Gemara Malacha? Gemara Malacha is you're making more hole. Because any opening that's not made to bring things in and out is not a Pesach. You're not Chayiv on Shabbos. But Rabbonon who goes, it's only Yisra the Rabbonon. Mishum, Lul Shoshar Because they're worried that you're going to make a hole in the chicken coop. The Ovid La Yiluya Aviru La Fuki Havla. And that opening is actually made to bring in fresh air. And it also serves to get rid of all the putrid air in the air so that the chickens don't die. Now, the hole that's made in the barrel, Bader Klal, is only to be able to pour out the wine and not to bring anything in, generally. Okay? Now, so therefore making a Pesach in a barrel in the first place is only also Bader Abonon. Why? Because you might then do it to a Lul Shatar Nagoylem. Now, why is Lul Shatar Nagoylem? Why will I end up doing that one more than any other one? Because a lot of people make a mistake and they think that the Lul, they don't know that the Lul is made to go in and out. They think it's only to bring ear in. Therefore, the Chacham said, if you, if we allow a Pesach that's only allowed, is bringing things in or out, 
then you'll say, oh, Tlul Shatar Nagayim is also only one way, and therefore I could do it. But really, it's two ways there. So therefore, the only reason why there was Asr to make a hole in the barrel in the first place is only Midir Abonam, because it's really only one way. It's only Le Hoytzi, not Lahachdis. Gimbala Hoysif Moysif. Sufi vade belu shlam gaim le osili sufi. Because there's no gzera on the hoistafa. Because no one's going to come to add to the lul shatan gaim's home, shum richasho. Because if you make it too wide, um, there's small little weasels and uh, what's, squirrels could get in and kill the chickens and the eggs. So therefore, nobody's going to widen it. So the whole Easter in the first place on the Nekev is only an Easter Rabbanan. That you, you might do it to Lush Golem, but the additional part, we're not worried that you do an additional part there. Okay, so, so the Gemara says like this. Now what does the second Manda Omer and the Brisa say? Some say, you're not allowed to add. Why? Because sometimes you didn't make the hole in the little Shatan Goyim properly. You made it too small. But also the and they'll remember that you're allowed to add to the barrel's hole, so they'll add to the chicken coop's hole as well. The halacha follows the yesh oimrim that there is an isad rabbanon to widen any hole on Shabbat. The Shadrin and the Brighter said they all agree. If it's an old hole that was just closed up, you could reopen it. It's if they're just trying to keep the the odor, the good smell of the wine, then they don't make such a strong closing. So you can reopen it on Shabbat. Because the first hole was never really undone. It's really there. It's just a little hole that, you know, the smell shouldn't, it should stay strong. But but if you're trying to strengthen the barrel, to make sure that it's tightly closed so that no wine drips out, then you basically undid the hole. And now, by making a new one, by making one, it's not re-bringing back something that's waiting. It's making a new hole. Asr. Okay? That's like a Pesach Chodosh. So the Gemara says, Hechidam l'sham, hechidam l'chazik. What, what did it mean exactly? How, how do you make these two different types of holes? One is just to guard the smell, and one is to strengthen. If it's higher than the wine, it's there to guard that this, this, the, 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 the smell. If it's beneath the wine, zeo l'chazik. That could also be l'shamer. So the hechidam l'chazik, and it should nikva l'matem in ashmorim. If you may, if the hole was underneath the sediments, so all the heaviness, the weight of the wine, is pressing down to the bottom. So there, if you ever close up such a hole, that's a hole you're going to close up really tightly, because there's a lot, a lot of pressure on the bottom. So that the petach, the initial petach, is gone, and now that you make a new one, it's a brand new one. There's a brayso that supports you. Bayis sasum. A house um, that its entrance to the chotzer is actually closed off, and now the people of the chotzer want to divide the chotzer. Yesh lo aba amot. So now each entrance to the chotzer, he gets four amot opposite that petach, as if as if that entranceway was still a, a, a usable entranceway that they didn't make statum. When is that talking about? When, when, when he was not parat et patimav. But parat et patimav. But if he took off the, um, the beams of the entrance before he stuffed it up, so then it's totally not an entrance anymore of the Inle Arba Amot. Doesn't have any semblance of an entrance. It's basically a wall now, and now he doesn't get arba amot when they divide the chater because it's not an entrance. Bayit satum, same thing with a house that's closed and there's a mate inside. Eno mitamei kol svivav. We still consider that the doorway is a doorway, and therefore, um, the 
the tumor really escapes. Okay? So the halacha is like this. If the Chachamim said that anything within four amot of a mate um, is already tomate. They didn't want people that were eating taharot to get too close to the mate. Because it become tamay in Torah. So, and the kever of a mate is the same thing. Within four amot. This is pretty amazing because it's also halacha of Tishvah. For then halacha. This is Tishvah's lot. So, if you have a, a, a mace that's inside a home, so as long as it has a petach, it doesn't have a din of a kever. So it's not going to be metame the, within four amot around it. But once the house gets closed off, it's like a kever. And now, it will be metame anything within four amot. So as long as you didn't take off the petzimen of the house, the beams that you build entrances, it's still, it's still called an entrance and it's not metami. So you see from here that a petach, an entrance, doesn't lose its name until you do a real, real good closing. And that's what Rav was saying before, that on the bottom of the barrel is a really good closing. And that's why it's closed off. And that's why it's a suit to reopen it. The Gemara now says, Guvta. Rav also Shmuel Shari. If you wedge in a, a hollow reed into the chavas, so now you have like a like a funnel or like a you know like a straw that it's going to flow out of nicely. That's a machlokes Rav and Shmuel. Mechateich lechatchilo the kuli amalei pligi. If you cut this corner, this reed. And you cut it to size that it should fit into the hole. The kuli amalei pligi to also. That's for sure also because you mean mistak and keli. You mean mistak and the kone. It's makar patish. Okay, or mechatech or boyne. But ahaduri, if you just put the straw back in that's already cut into the nekev, because erev shabbat they already made it fit perfectly into the hole, and now you just want to put it in. To cool me, I'll make a plea to show everyone over there holds it 100% mutar. Keep pleading the chaticha of the mistakna. Where do they argue? They argue um, you cut it and it already fits, but they never put it inside to see if it actually fits. So the Maroyim argue like this Man the Osir, Rav that said it's Osir, Gazin and Dimma Osir, the Mikhtak Lachatchilo. The Chacham said it's Osir, because maybe you'll find out when you try to put it in, you thought it was the size, but it wasn't. You have to cut a little more. So therefore you'll cut. Shmuel holds it, they didn't make such a gzera. The Gemara says, This Nachlech is we find. You're not allowed to cut a tube on Yom Toiv to make it fit into a hole of a barrel. For sure not on Shabbat. It's more chamur. But if it was already in the hole, naflo, machzir. And now it fell out, you'll have to put it back to Shabbat. And Rabbi Yoshia says, he's lenient. So the Gemara says, he's lenient on what? The last din in the bright that said everything's okay. How can he be more lenient? Rabbi Yoshia, hey, he lay my ratio. So you're going to tell me that what? He's going back on the ratio. That what? That you're cutting. You want to cut it to size? Of course not. How come it's stuck in mono? Ella safer must be he's going on the safer. And the safer says that if it was already cut to size and it was inside the barrel and it fell out, you let it put it back in. Tanakama nami mishra koshari. The Tanakama also said it's mutter. So what is Rabbi Yoshia being more makal about? He already said it's mutar. Right? Ella de chaticha vleim is stuck, not The difference is no, it's already cut to size, but they never placed it in. So the Tanakam and Rabbi Yosha are arguing, are you allowed to place it inside for the first time? That's the Machlekes Rav and Shmuel that we said. Ma'asav Gazrin and Ma'asav Gazrinon, and that's Machlekes. Between Rav and Shmuel. Doresh Rav Shishu B'Rei Davidi, Mishmei Rabbi Yechon, Halokh Rabbi Yosha, 
which is like Shmuel, that it's going to be Mutter. Um, it happens to be usually passing like Rav on his Surah. But here, Rav Shisha Ravidi, which came after Rav, oh, well, actually, no, the name of Rav Yechanan. He passing like Rav Yechanan, he's passing like Rav Yechanan, passing like Rav Yechanan over Rav. And that's why it's Mutter. <laughs> The Mishnah said that if it already had a hole in Erev Shabbat and someone wanted to come and close off the hole with... So he, he, what does he do? He shouldn't place it with, do it with wax. Because he's smoothing out the wax and that's a melocho. That's a melocho. That's a toil of the melocho of Mimachik. So it's a told of a machik. What's a machik? A machik is when you get the hair off the hive to smooth it out. So any types of smoothing out um, things over a surface is a told of a machik. So the Gemara says, let's say you put something else, not wax. Mishra, thick oil, to stuff it up. Rav also Shmuel Shari. Rav says, also Shmuel says, Mutter, Manda also Gazuni Mishra Shaiva. Because it's exterior because of Shav. Because it looks like Shav. People mix it up. Uman deshari loy gazrin. Amar leshumol bar babchana lerav Yosef. Beferish amar slo mishmei de Rav. The mishchash mishchashar. You told us in the name of Rav that this is mutter and there's no gzera because of shava. All the poskim say this is actually oser because gzera because of shava. Like in the first nusach of Rav, and we pass like Rav over Shmuel. Um. The mice everybody asked, so we had a Gemara before. You're not allowed to stick in kernel, um, bulbs of garlic into the neck of Chavis. Unless you do it in a tricky way with a loophole like Talmud Chacham. He had a head to do it. But he wasn't doing it to close. So you see it's like Tikkun Keli. But they want to answer that that's also because there's already wine coming out of that hole. But if there's no wine coming out of that hole, because it's like higher than the wine, then it doesn't look like you're stuck in a keli, and the whole Easter is only an Easter of Mimareach, and that's why there's no issue of Tikkun, because Easter Mimareach, we have this Machlik. It's in Rav and Shmuel. Omar Tuva, Rishpa. Omar Tovus Rishpa. Tovus, the hunter, said Omar Shmuel, the name of Shmuel. He was one of the Tamidim of Shmuel. And he had, had the huntings, not with an arrow, obviously. He was a great Amoira. He had nets that he would trap Chayas and Oifus. Others say that Rishba means Rosh Beis Av, like a Nasi and a Choshev. He said over the name of Shmuel, Haitarpa de Osa. This myrtle leaf, Osur, you're not going to fold it like a... Uh, basically, you take some sort of myrtle branch and you, and you put it inside. Um, it's a way for the, the wine to flow out over it. Because if you don't have it, it will dribble onto its, onto its walls. It's like a spout. So he said, Shmuel, my Rebbe said it's Osir. My time, Rav Yemim, if you're allowed to do that, um, a person will make a Marzdev, a real spout on Shabbat. Okay? 
Now, Ravashi Omek Zeri Shem Yiktoi. Zeri is because you might come to pluck off some leaves and you'll be over on Tikkun Keli. Might be Nayu. It could be Nayu, the Kotum Manchi. If you already have a lot um, prepared before Shabbos, it's mutter, because you're not going to be kaitim anymore. But, according to Rav Yemar, it's still Osir, because it's a Shem Yavu, last is Marzif. Beistadio, Rav Osar, Shmuel Shori. These sheets, these like linen things that were, that were made for blankets and pillows, Rav hold, they were also to move the Mishra Sarabim, meaning to wrap yourself into them and make them like a, you know, it's my clothing, and I'm walking through. Shmuel says it's mutter. Okay. So, Beisadio, Rav holds it's like Naram Albush, it's a master. Says the Gemara, what's the Machlok? is Barak and the Kuli Amalei Pligidi Shori. If it's rakin, soft linen, everybody holds its mutter. Because that's a malbush. People would wear them. But because if it's very rough stuff, nobody would wear them. So of course it's a masak. He pleads with the like it's a By middle. You know why it doesn't have so much, doesn't have tissue up? Because it's made for you, it's no one can learn on Tishbaf. It's only that, it's made for the So, fine. So, the Gemara says, Man deshoi dole merci ke masri. Other one says, it, it's not, it, doesn't look, it, it doesn't look like a masri. It looks like a levush. Vahal de rav, la befeir shet me'am l'cholit. We never heard that rav said, it's also. We just derived it, we inferred it. Why? Because there's a story. The rav ikla, Rav went to a city that didn't have enough space for people to come and sit to hear his drosha. Nofak Yosef B'Karmelis. So he sat down in a Karmelis nearby. They brought him these sheets so he could, he could put them underneath when he sits. Lo Yosef. He sat on the earth. How is that for Tishwaf? Lo Yosef. Either way. Man the Khaza Sava Mishud Bay Sadi Asr. Vilohi, the Rava Khruzi Maz Mahriz. So whoever saw thought, he didn't want to sit on them, because according to Rav, Bay Sadi is also to carry. So therefore, that's why they said that Rav holds it's Asr. He didn't want to be have any pleasure from Khil Shabbat. Okay? And by the way, those were like middle average types of not too soft, not too... Because otherwise, if they were too rough, then why would you have a raya that Rav holds by the middle ones? Everybody holds. And if they're too soft, he, why would he... So the lawyer, but the Gemara says, it's not a proof from that story. That's where this man got that Rav holds its osir, but it's not true, boy. The Rav achruzi machis. Because Rav himself called that once in public, Beisad Yashari, it's mutter. So why didn't he want to sit on them that Shabbos? Because there were certain chachamim He didn't want to sit on these pillows because of the covenant of these hechav. Um, Rav considered them like his friends. Even though they were his talmidim, but they already grew so great, they're like him. So he didn't want to take any covenant in front of them. Uman ninhu, and who are they? Rav kehanya viravasi. That's why he didn't sit on them. Chazak By the way, we cut off.